And then there was St. Kevin and the Blackbird. The saint is kneeling, arms stretched out inside his cell, but the cell is narrow. So one upturned palm is out the window, stiff as a crossbeam, when the blackbird lands and lays in it and settles down to nest. Kevin feels the warm eggs, the small breast, the tucked neat head and claws, and finding himself linked into the network of eternal life is moved to pity. Now he must hold his hand like a branch out in the sun and rain for weeks, until the young are hatched and fledged and flown. And since the whole thing's imaginary, anyhow, imagine being Kevin. Which is he? Self-forgetful or in agony all the time? From the neck on out down through his hurting forearms, are his fingers sleeping? Does he still feel his knees? Or has the shut-eyed blank of under-earth crept up through him? Is there distance in his head, alone and mirrored clear in love's deep river? To labor and not to seek reward, he prays. A prayer his body makes entirely, for he has forgotten self, forgotten bird, and on the riverbank forgotten the river's name.